close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body, and notice if it feels comfortable. After all, the breath is the force of life. It should feel good coming in and going out. So if it doesn't feel good, see if you can change it. Make it shorter, longer, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. Think of the breath energizing the whole body, nourishing the whole body. And try to keep your mind here as a safe place where it's quiet. You don't have to think about much when you're with the breath. Other thoughts can go past. It's like you're lying low and the aircraft are flying above. And they can fly wherever they want, but you don't have to get caught up in them. You're here with the breath. You're well grounded. And your thoughts can fly around as they like, but you need, don't need to get involved. Because after all, where do our thoughts come from? They come from all kinds of things, from our own greed, aversion, and delusion, from the greed, aversion, and delusion of other people, for the most part. We tend to fill our minds with all kinds of garbage. We turn on the radio, we learn news, but you know, in a week that news is going to be old. It's going to be stale. It's not going to be interesting anymore. This is why the Buddha said you, it's good to have something in addition to a quiet mind in order to protect yourself, because you need something to fight off the thoughts that come from greed, aversion, delusion that can they can, they can harm you. This is why he said one of the protections that you can give yourself is by learning the Dharma. It puts new thoughts in your mind. The Buddha compares them to weapons. In other words, a thought comes in that's going to get you depressed, you learn how to fight it off. A thought that comes in that's going to get you angry, you fight it off. But remember what the Buddha had to say about the need to keep the mind cheerful, the need to keep the mind away from anger. Think about the, the drawbacks of anger, think about the the benefits of having goodwill for everybody. In other words, you have new weapons inside that you can deal with the thoughts that come in. Because getting just getting the mind quiet, you have to deal with a lot of thoughts to fend them off. And sometimes the quietness and the sense of well-being that comes from the breath is enough, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes the mind is really insistent, it's got to think this thought. And you have to remind yourself, well, no, you don't have to. There are better thoughts to think. Now where do we get them? We get them from listening to the Dharma give some advice on how to think about things, how to think about anger, how to think about lust, how to think about greed, in ways that these things don't overcome the mind. When aging, illness, and death come in, how to think about those so they don't make, cause the mind to suffer. The Buddha said it is possible to have your mind separate from these things. In other words, the pain of aging, the pain and the worry of illness, the pain and the worry of death, they can be there, but you don't have to get involved with them. When you don't get involved with in the worries, they go away, because you're, you're feeding the worries, and then the worries turn around and bite you. It's like an ungrateful animal that you keep in your house. You feed it, but it comes around and bites you. And this is your thoughts, so many times I just like that. So you need something to fend off these ungrateful thoughts. That's why the Buddha gives you the Dharma. He gives us the Dharma to learn about how to separate yourself from the body. So even though the body is aging, you, the mind, you, you remind yourself, is not aging. The body may be growing ill, but the mind doesn't have to be ill. The body may die, but the mind doesn't die. Remember that. Always keep that in mind so you don't get too tied up in, this, in the pain and the worry that comes with these things. And that way you've got your weapons inside to protect yourself, and to protect yourself from thoughts coming in from outside. There's so much garbage in the media these days. You have the, the teachings of the Buddha to remind you that what's really important in life is looking after your own mind. The media says that the important things in life are what other people are doing someplace else. Their only concern for you is for you to buy their, buy their goods. But the Buddha had more, a lot more concern for you than that. His concern was, why are you making yourself suffer? Here's a way to think. Here's a way to train your mind so that it doesn't have to suffer. Even though we're born into a world of aging, illness, and death, the mind doesn't need to suffer. That's something you always want to keep in mind. That's your protection. So as you're getting mind to settle down, remember part of settling the mind down is learning how not to think, but it also requires learning how to think. And if you have a fund of knowledge that you picked up from the Dharma, that'll give you some good ideas about what kind of thinking really will be for your own benefit.